Summer is officially underway. We wrapped up June with our Fridley 49ers Day celebration and annual kids safety camp. Fridley police are gearing up for this year's Night to Unite. Election staff are preparing for primaries this August and Springbrook Nature Center kicks off the summer season with a concert series. All this and more on this edition of Community Connection. Thanks for joining us. I'm Brooke Hall coming to you from Logan Park and this is Community Connection. This month we celebrated our community with a two-day festival and a kids day camp all about safety. Here's a look at what happened at this year's Fridley 49ers Days and annual kids safety camp. Another great event is coming this fall. Liquor store assistant manager Thad Norlinger is coming to us to talk about the second annual Autumn Sampler. Hi, my name is Thad Norlinger and I'm with Fridley Liquor. I'm here today to talk about the second annual Springbrook Autumn Sampler at Springbrook Nature Center. This is a fundraising event for the Springbrook Nature Center uh, where we'll be partnering with the Springbrook Nature Center and the Springbrook Nature Center Foundation and hosting a beer, wine and food tasting. There'll be live music and silent auctions. We'll have many craft beers and local foods available for you to sample. The event is Friday, September 14th from 5.30 to 8. You can find tickets online at eventbrite.com and further details on the City of Fridley's website. Our police department is gearing up for this year's Night to Unite and are excited to connect with you at this popular event. Here's Courtney Miller, Crime Prevention Specialist with everything you need to know about your neighborhood block party. Hi, I'm Courtney Miller, Crime Prevention Specialist with the Fridley Police Department, and I have a couple important upcoming dates for you to take note of. On Tuesday, August 7th, we have our annual Night to Unite event. Fridley Police, Fire, and City staff will be visiting block parties throughout the city, sharing in food and fun and getting to know our community a little bit better. All registered block parties will get free goodies on Monday, August 6th from 3 to 7 p.m. at the lower level meeting rooms at City Hall. You must register your block party to get these free goodies. Registration is available at fridleymn.gov forward slash night to night and registration closes Friday, July 20th. So make sure you register your block party and we're excited to see you come August. Our election staff are preparing for primaries this August. Annie Liebel, elections assistant, will give us everything we need to know about voting and how to become an election judge. The City of Fridley is recruiting election judges to work at our polling locations for the primary election on August 14th and the general election on November 6th. 
Election judges help register and greet voters, explain voting procedures, provide ballots, and monitor the election. According to state statute, places of employment are required to provide time off and compensation to serve as an election judge, as long as you provide your employer with a 20-day written notice prior to the election. In order to serve as an election judge and to ensure political party balance, you must declare political party affiliation if you are affiliated with a major political party. You can also serve as an unaffiliated judge. Some of the tasks performed do require an election judge to be affiliated with a political party. And there are two major parties in Minnesota, the Republicans and the Democrats. This year, the city will be using new voting equipment to help register voters. Instead of using paper rosters, we will be using no-ink poll pads. These iPads are like electronic voting rosters. If you own or use an iPad, tablet, or smartphone, you would be a great technology judge. These judges earn a higher compensation rate and will help other judges register voters with the new system. We do ask that election judges serve the full day from 6 a.m. to 9 or 10 p.m. after the polls close. It can be a 15 to 16 hour workday for those working. In addition, election judges will attend two two hour training sessions, both of which are compensated for. If you are interested in serving as an election judge or would like more information, contact the city clerk's office or visit the City of Fridley website to download an application. Absentee voting is becoming a popular method of voting. Any eligible voter can vote by absentee ballot. It is a great way to participate if you are homebound, disabled, or want to avoid the long lines. The process begins 46 days prior to the election. For the primary election, it begins June 29th and ends August 13th. For the general election, it begins September 21st and ends November 5th. To vote by mail, you can download an application from the city website, request one by email, or by calling the election's phone number. If you would like to vote in person, stop by City Hall to fill out an application and receive your ballot. You can check the status of your ballot on the Minnesota Secretary of State's website. It will show if your ballot has been received and if it was accepted or rejected. As summer brings on the heat, many of us head to the water to cool off. Here's Assistant Fire Chief Mark Seaton with water safety tips. Hi, my name is Mark Seaton. I'm the Assistant Fire Chief for the Fridley Fire Department. I'm also a swift water rescue instructor, uh, an avid boater and fisherman. I fish the Mississippi River on a regular basis. And we wanted to talk to you today about uh, safety on the water in general and specifically on the Mississippi River as it uh, borders our city. Uh, this is an extremely dangerous river. It's fun to be out on. There's a lot of uh, opportunities to have some good rec recreation there, but we, we need people to respect the river. The river can be dangerous if you're unprepared for it, and that's usually when we get involved, when people are unprepared for the dangers. We've had people that go out on boats that are not being properly maintained. We had a rescue like that uh, last summer. Uh, individuals thought their first uh, the, their first time out on their new boat, which was a very old, unmaintained boat, uh, they decided to take it out on the Mississippi River, and it, uh, nobody got hurt, but they ended up needing to be rescued. The current out here is deceiving. It's very deceiving to boaters, it's deceiving to swimmers. We've had individuals that have tried to swim across the river to some of the islands, uh, and that, that is extremely dangerous, uh, especially when they don't do it without a personal flotation device. Personal flotation devices is so important to all people that whether you're uh, swimming near the shore or whether you're in a boat. When I boat on the river, I absolutely do not uh, not wear my PFD. It's too dangerous. Uh, if you fall overboard, you can quickly be separated from your boat and not be able to swim back to it. And you may not be able to swim to shore. The current is very deceiving, very deceiving. Today, uh, we're at springtime, uh, and the current's moving pretty fast. It's uh, probably a two to three mile an hour current, and even the best swimmer is not going to be able to overtake that. Uh, you're, at, you're at the mercy of the current. So it's, it's 
absolutely important to wear your personal flotation device. Uh, per, uh, drownings are the third leading cause of accidental deaths in America. And for children, uh, children under the age of 14, it's the number one cause of accidental death. If you're supervising a group of children and they're playing down by, uh, say, the dock or in the park and they're near the water, they should have a PFD on. Uh, things happen very quickly. We all know that children are quick and agile, more than us adults, and they can get themselves in trouble. And when you're talking about the river, uh, they're quickly moved outside your reach of being able to help. Um, it's absolutely imperative that they have a PFD. Um, this is, I, I can't stress that enough. Enjoy evenings filled with music and cultural performances this summer at Springbrook Nature Center. Interpretive specialist Mary Morris talks more about the concert series. Uh, Mary Morris here from Springbrook Nature Center. I got Remy along with me. We are just practicing to make sure that this amphitheater is sounding great. Clearly, we will not be doing any concerts, but come back in July and August. We have Bernie King and the Guilty Pleasures playing on July 10th. That's a Tuesday night, 7 p.m. Be here. And then in August, we have Tina Shalesky will be playing on August 14th, also starting at 7 p.m. Feel free to bring your own chairs, blankets, whatever you might want to sit on to be nice and cozy for the concerts. Bring a picnic out to our picnic shelter ahead of time. Grab some playtime in the nature play area. Uh, the concerts are free, open to the public. Just come on over. Again, that is Tuesday, July 10th and Tuesday, August 14th. As you can see, there's uh, plenty of seating here for this little concert Remy and I are practicing. There will not be plenty of seating when Bernie King and the Guilty Pleasures and Tina Shalesky are here later this summer, so make sure to get your spots early! See you then! Now let's take a look at what our City Council is working on. Here's City Manager Wally Weisfull with the Council Update. Hello and welcome to the City Council update for June. I'm Wally Weisopel, City Manager, and here's what the City Council was up to for June 11th and 25th. We had a conference meeting before each of the City Council meetings, and the City Council discussed several items without taking any action with regard to getting an update to the Parks and Recreation programs and the new changes taking place within the Parks and Recreation. We also had an update on feeding of wild animals. We've received several calls from residents concerning uh, neighbors that are fe feeding ducks and geese and turkeys and uh, deer and the problems that that causes and the staff provided the City Council with some information with the, regarding those items. No action was taken uh, and we'll follow up with the City Council with a report in six months. We had an update from our city prosecutor. The city prosecutor is uh, the city of Coon Rapids and we have a collaborative agreement with them since J uh, January 1st of this year. And David Brody, the attorney, provided the city council an update on how things are going. And that report was very positive and uh, we continue to have a good relationship with the city of Coon Rapids. We also had an update from the police chief on body-worn cameras. These are the cameras that are worn that will be worn by our uh, police officers beginning in January of 2019. And this was an update as far as all the public meetings and information that the police department has been gathering from citizens in that regard. And uh, in July at our city council meeting, the uh, police will ask for a formal action by the city council to approve a policy to move forward from here. At the regular legislative agenda, the City Council approved a variance, this is a zoning document, for Ashley Furniture, located just off of 694, to allow them to expand with a canopy, and that uh, variance allowed them to uh, build within the encroachment area uh, of that and, uh, property and also to cover more land that is typically required. The reason for the variance is that the uh, reason is that the people now shop in different ways and uh, Ashley Furniture needed to provide a covered canopy for the deliveries and uh, the um, 
uh, furniture displacement there. So uh, that was approved and then the absentee ballot board was approved. This is the group of people that review absentee ballots uh, and with the elections coming up this fall. We also approved an agreement with Anoka County for what's called poll books and these are the books that electronic books that are going to be used uh, for signatures to verify your residency uh, at this year's election. We also had approval of a single audit. Now a single audit is done because the city received a large grant from the federal government to construct the uh, Main Street Bridge over 694 and as a part of that receipt of the money we have to make sure that it was all spent accordingly and it was. We had then had a TIF plan approved for 5101 Industrial Boulevard. Uh, this will allow the new owner uh, to improve the property by cleaning up some contamination and then making improvements and then uh, making that building available for lease. We had a preliminary plat approval for 6663 Lucia Lane. Uh, this is a large tract of property that's going to be subdivided and allowed for several homes to be built on it. Then we had a final plat for Pulte Homes. This is the new development in Lock Park Point. These are the patio homes that will be built and uh, construction will be able to begin uh, this, this uh, summer. We had no parking restrictions approved for 69th Avenue, that section between Stinson Boulevard and Central Avenue. Uh, this is a part of the reconstruction project that is ongoing. And then we had a massage therapy ordinance approved after several readings. Uh, this is a new licensing requirement uh, because the state of Minnesota does not uh, license massage therapy businesses. Uh, this allows the city to do that and regulate them and prevent the human trafficking uh, problems that have existed in some of these therapy locations. And then finally, the City Council approved traffic regulations for Lucia Lane. Uh, this is a little segment of street uh, just off of Highway 65 in Mississippi that gets a lot of traffic on certain days and uh, the traffic restrictions were requested by uh, the residents and that uh, temporary uh, traffic uh, restrictions will begin uh, in the next few weeks and then uh, consideration for permanent improvements next year. So that's what the council is up to in June. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Wally Weisopel. Thanks for watching. Looking for something to do this summer? Fridley Community Theater is partnering with a local nonprofit organization to give back this summer with their musical performance of Sister Act and various other events in the community. Check out our community calendar for upcoming events and activities. That's all for July's edition of Community Connection. Subscribe to email updates. Follow the City of Fridley on Facebook and Twitter for the latest city news. I'm Brooke Hall. Thank you for watching. This has been a production of Fridley Municipal Television, Channel 17. Thanks for watching.